Hello, everybody. Great news. My student's friend is not coming up. Uh, so welcome to another episode of From the Angora. This is, I'm doing this tonight because tomorrow I have to work until 6, and I'm just going to be too dead tired. So, um, all right. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about living with unsupportive parents and the kinds of scars that can form from that and the type of trauma that can form from that. So, when, so I'm going to start off way at the beginning of time. Well, not really. Um, when I discovered that there was people out there that not only did not believe in a Christian God. That was actually the first time I ever heard of the word atheist, which shows how sheltered I was. And so, um, and so I, so I discovered there were people out there that did not believe in a single all-powerful deity. And I was very much interested in becoming a part of that community. So when I was 11, I decided to try my hand at Wicca. And I was Wiccan for a very long time. When I was in my early 20s, about 22, 23 years old, which is shocking, which, you know, which tells people that I am old, um, I was told by my mother that she did not want me to be practicing Wicca and witchcraft in her house and so what I ended up doing was I ended up searching for another path that I could possibly follow. And I've done, I have done multiple paths, just like I, just like people have tried multiple drugs. Um, I have done Hellenism. I have done heathenism. I've done Greco. I've done um, variations of Wicca. I've done heathenism. I've done Irish polytheism. I've done at all. So what led to the, first of all, the jumping around and two, leaving the original pagan religion that I had been a part of and quite simply unsupportive parent. So unsupportive parents are probably the weirdest bunch of people they can possibly ever encounter. They love you, but they don't support everything you're doing. And supporting what, every, what you're doing, what your child's doing, is important for their mental health. I go as far as being important for your spiritual health. So, when I discovered Hellenism and Timothy J. Alexander's Forum... I would go there and I would spend hours just reading the posts and reading the reactions. And I was in my own little world, a world where I was safe. I was around supportive people. And I had a community that was more into the facts than just what felt good or what what was supposedly right. So, so, you know, so the weird thing about it is when my mother had said, I don't want you to be practicing Wicca and witchcraft in my house, she never had, never had me throw the books away or my ingredients away or anything like that. But as time progressed on, as she became more and more concerned about what I was doing. Am I going to go to heaven? All this other stuff. She became more and more obsessed and more and more controlling. To the point where I had to hide what I was doing behind something else. And that sucked. Um, so when you have an unsupported parent, it doesn't matter if it's religion. It doesn't matter if it's, if you're 
gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, when you have unsupportive parents, you, these scars mentally develop. And they develop because they're constantly attacking you, constantly, constantly, and constantly attacking you. You can't do anything right unless you're part of this particular religion. You know, oh, what what do you bring into the house? You know, um, when I was trying to continue being Wiccan, this was in my early 20s, even all the way up until about, you know, any time that I would do a ritual or do some kind of charm work or something like that, I always felt like that there was this block. So I got to the point where nothing was working because I had that block. With Hellenism, you don't have these elaborate um, tools or these elaborate whatever. You can get an Altoid tin and you can um, make a little mini shrine to, say, Hera. And when you're done with it, you can put it away and hide it. And that was another thing that caused a lot of a lot of trauma. And that was I would set up an altar or set up a shrine, and I would always feel like that it was being judged or that I was being judged because I had a pagan altar up. Even though I didn't have a pinnacle and didn't have you know, an athame and a wand and all that type of stuff, it still was this judgment. And it was a judgment that was very, very hard on me. I remember one of the sickest, the sickest um, moments was when we were down here and, you know, me and my mother were in the kitchen and she was like, we have to do it the way God wants us to do. And she hugged me in this really kind of creepy way. It felt creepy to me. It felt just, ugh. And she's like, well, you have to get rid of the statues. And I never did mainly because my mother did not have any authority over what I spent my paycheck on. I remember, must have been, oh man, how long, like four or five years ago, I was working temp. And I always look forward to um, payday. And I bought a statue of Ra. And everyone knows when the Greeks invaded, or not, well, I would say invaded, but went to Egypt to, to defeat the Persians, they equated, just like the Romans later on would, they equated uh, a lot of the Egyptian gods with their Greek gods. For instance, Basset was equated with the goddess Artemis. I love cats and I love Artemis. So, yeah, <laughs> and I don't know about Ra. He might have been equated with Zeus. I don't know. So, um, so you had that connection, like you know, this deity is similar to this deity, and all that type of stuff. So, so I bought a statue of Ra, and my cat sprayed it. I just, I'll tell you something, three years after he sprayed it, it still was stinky. <laughs> um, so you, so you had that, you know, the moment it arrived, my mother knew right off the bat it was a statue because it was in a box. Well, no, let me tell you that. That wasn't what it, what her what her you know, um, you know 
her figure, there was a statue because it was in the box because everything comes in the boxes. It was when I opened it up. And I pulled out the statue of Ra and my mother had this look on her face of, oh my God, another stupid statue. And the look that she gave me was, I don't want in the house. I don't care that you spent your paycheck on it. I don't want in the house. But I kept it. Um... So, so it was, it was her trying to control what religion I was in, trying to make me feel guilty about still being pagan. It's all this. So living with unsupportive parents or unsupportive parent or unsupportive family is extremely hard, especially if you're a teenager or especially for me who had been used to over 10 years having a mother who supported me, supported my religious choices. And suddenly we got to go to church and you, Oh, you got to listen to this sermon. Um, and the amount of anger that she had when I wouldn't do what she wanted. And it was interesting. I was reading this article about a month before my mother passed away. And the pastor said, point blank, the dynamic between a mother and a child changes when the child becomes an adult. You have to respect the wishes of the child. You cannot be the parent anymore. You have to let that person live their life, make their own mistakes, and realize that in the end, you were right. But just the idea that a pastor said the relationship changes because of the age is what I have, what I, when I made a mention to my brother a long time ago. So you have that you have that need to control and to dictate. And my mother was very much into controlling. If she would do everything in her power to control what I did. Even, you know, I never did anything illegal. I never did, went through teenage rebellion because I really, I did not have anything to rebel against. I had a supportive mother. I, you know, she had always been by my side through everything. But being a pagan, first of all, being a witch and all that, she was okay for it for a while. And then as she got older and older and older, that, that support vanished. And you have the mother that said, she made a vow years and years ago, I'm not going to end up like my mother, and she did end up like becoming her mother. Um, I have inherited things from my mother, from my grandmother, from whatever generations of women that I simply cannot overcome. They are traits that you inherit. Not learning from your experiences is something that is of your own doing. So, for instance, is... Um, when you know that when you know how it felt to be controlled by your mother, to not have that personal choice, and then you turn around and you do the same thing, it tells the person you actually did not mind being controlled, being dictated by your mother. That, that you did what you did out of spite, not out of the tr genuine desire to not be like your parents. And it's, it's, it's really, this is my own personal experience, um, and it's a very, it's when you do, when I do videos like this, it really feels good to be able to 
talk about this because you are able to get it out and able to um, talk about it. But that is why my temple is so important to me. That is why having this channel is so important. It helps me to reach that point that I need to reach to become a better person, to rise up and say, okay, that woman is dead and gone. I don't have to be like her because if I'm like her, I did not, I, I really wasn't affected by it. Or I'm allowing the experience to turn me into her. And there are, there are, there are people that are pagan, people of polytheists, that become, that, you know, that they say, these are the bad experiences that I had, and that has made, made the desire even more great to not become that person. And there's always this huge chance, huge thing that you are not going to be like your parents because you know what it's like to be degraded. You know what it's like to be treated as though you don't know what you're doing. You don't understand anything or nothing. You're just a little girl, even though you're 40 or 50 years old, and I'm the parent, and I know more than you, you know. And, and the thing is, it, it kind of really agitates me that parents that have this kind of volatile relationship with their kids, they don't realize or they don't seem to care to realize that they do, in fact, damage that relationship that they have with their with their um their with their children they damage it and the same thing goes with uh, people that are members of the lgbtq community they have these really bad experiences with unsupportive parents and uh, and it damages them it it makes them more receptive to individual you know the right to be who you are to be your authentic self all this so i think that it's important to learn from this but you know i just really i really wish my mother had been more supportive of what I was doing, of the path I was down and everything. Um, but she was not. And that hurt. And I think it'll hurt for a very long time. But, you know, my advice to teenagers, my advice to adults that are still living at home, you know, I never left home. And, you know, and I never left home because I never completed high school. Um, I'm smart as I'm smart, but I never, I've never left. I never left. I never graduated from high school. So I had no college waiting on me where I could be out of the house and I could be, you know, away from my mother. And I probably would have never, ever have encountered, you know, her, dislike for what I was doing. But anyways, um, you know, I'm going to end here and, um, you know, just everybody just stay strong, follow your gods, even if you can't have a big altar, but follow your gods, live a virtuous life and understand that you'll free, you'll be free of your parents one or two ways. Either you leave home or they'll pass away. And when they pass away, there's going to be a lot of a lot of things not resolved. And the and my religious choice was one of those things that was never resolved. And it hurts to know that it never will be. All right. So I am going to um, let you guys go. Hope you guys have a really great day. And until next time, may you be happy, healthy, and most importantly, be safe. God's bless.